Welcome to BlackUSA.News Morning Show. I'm your host, William Honolulu Jr. Join us as we explore the news and opinions that impact our community. We break down how the major stories have a very personal, local, and racial impact. No topic is off limits, but even if the conversation gets rough, we're always going to keep it real. Greetings and salutations, all my people out there in internet land. I am William Honolulu Jr., and I have the privilege and honor of serving as the host of the BlackUSA.News Morning Show. Uh, welcome, welcome, welcome. We have a great show for you today, especially out here for the parents, those of you all who have young people who are maturing, getting ready for that age where they leave high school and the, the comforts of home and go to the harsh and unrelenting world of college and further academics um but it doesn't even have to be that dramatic it really doesn't we got a brother on here today james henderson one of my good friends like i've known him 20 some years back in undergrad days and stuff like that but you know so uh, i can't tell you what else is going to get said today because that sometimes that happens you know like people know you from the olden days like oh yeah wait no that's that's not a story we tell here Okay, if I'm gonna be honest, that normally happens with me. I'm normally the person that talks about this stuff. That's not okay. Never mind. Never mind. I think you'd be good, but y'all, y'all, mm, y'all know how it goes. You know how I get excited when I'm getting talk to. Okay, show notes. Oh, so I got to be professional with this one. Okay, uh, want to say a big shout out to the super producer Kyle Crazy Horse Morgan and our assistant producer Brandy Raymar, who do a awesome job of making sure that we have all the tools and resources we need to provide quality content to you all all week long. Um, want to say a big shout out to some of our sponsors, Darker Than Blue Grill. Y'all know I need to go ahead and get me some more of that cowboy prime rib and edible arrangements. Fruit is always amazing. Always amazing. The candy is phenomenal. Comes to your house. It even gets DoorDash now. DoorDash. DoorDash, y'all. You can get fruit covered with candy. DoorDash to your house. My endocrinologist is not so happy that I found out about this, but it means what you're going to do. Like, I'm not going to eat it. That's crazy. So if you want to celebrate uh, celebrate something uh, like your college, your high school student, get ready to go to college. See how we tying it all back in? If you want to celebrate something, stop by the edible arrangements in Govins or in Randallstown or actually in Pittsburgh. Um, they are always uh, really engaged in the community, though, especially those. I, now, I can't talk about all their locations. I'm sure they're great people. But I can talk about those three locations, always doing stuff and holding down the black community. Uh, let's see this. Oh, uh, I Am Black Wall Street, the book by Donnie Glover. Um, it is a wonderful uh, piece of scholarship that goes in a, tr- a different direction than people when they generally talk about uh, Black Wall Street. Uh, normally, when people talk about Black Wall Street, it's a focus on uh, what it was or like how how amazing Black Wall Street was or or how horrible it was uh, when it was destroyed, it's particularly talking about the Tulsa, Oklahoma uh, pl- space that was designated Black Wall Street and Greenwood in that in Tulsa. Um but what he does is takes a little bit of a different spin on it. He takes a look at how people got to Tulsa, Oklahoma. He also talks about the other uh, locations that were designated Black Wall Streets as well. And he 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 gives us kind of a, a, a idea of what they went through, some of the decision making and, and some of the thoughts that they had and making it to Tulsa, Oklahoma. And to be honest, some of it reads like a pretty good blueprint for uh, what we're trying to do now. I mean, sadly. Sadly, we're celebrating, uh, uh, well, memorializing 100 years since the Tulsa, Oklahoma bombing and massacre. And a lot of the things that they were fighting for, the issues that they have, the magnitude, again, I'm not trying to take nothing away from any progress we've made, but we still got a lot of work left to do. And so we can start taking an opportunity and thinking about how we come together. How do we leverage our resources? How do we stand strong, united? Um, I don't think we're going to be able to successfully fend off the attacks from capitalism, uh, racism, misogyny, misogyny, because we're all we're all will be too busy fighting over things that don't matter. Real talk. I don't want that. I don't want that for us. So um yeah, so pick up his book. I'm sorry, y- y'all know mm, y- y'all know how I get 
into stuff and then I forget what I'm supposed to be talking about. I, I don't even honestly I gotta be honest, I don't know how like, long they're gonna let me keep this job because it's not I'm not a professional at this. Y'all know y'all know how it is. I just like I like talking to people, like and educating you on letting y'all know what's really going on. So um I got another opportunity to do that. And again, I want to make sure that we focus on our parents out there or people who have are guardians or or actively engaged in a young person's life. Um tell you a little bit before uh, the brother comes to the stage. Um you all know I have two uh, sons, LJ and Diddy. Uh, they both went on the college tour that we're going to talk about. They, uh, LJ actually went on the HBCU and the Ivy League tour, I think. And I think uh, Diddy went on. I know Diddy went on the HBCU tour. Um, and so my youngest, he's brilliant. Uh, old, the oldest one, incredibly smart. But I want to talk about the youngest one for just a second. Because the youngest one... Um, he thought he would because when we originally had scheduled the uh, the college tour, it was supposed to, you know winter break. I mean spring break that year was like seven or eight days, but we had had a whole bunch of snow, so it went from an eight day spring break to like a four day like a long weekend with a couple extra days in the next week. So they were trying to make up the days, and um uh the youngest said, you know I don't know if I'm gonna if I want to go on a college tour anymore. It's like, honestly, there's none of the schools that were on my list are on. And I was just going, you know, because I think it's important that I see about HBCUs, but none of them are on my list. And and that's going to when I get back, I'll only have one day of actual spring break. And I was so, you know, I'm struggling because at that time we had been, gotten divorced and I'm, you know, I'm really still trying to figure out what what is this parenting, co-parenting kind of thing look like? And so I, I, I could, I'm thinking I don't want to lay the hammer down. Like, well, look, people already paid money because that, because in my day, if somebody wrote a check about anything, oh, you were going. Like, unless you, like, I, oh, I remember one day I don't, my head was hurting, nose was stuffed up. You know what these Bamas did? They took some of that old Dr. Watkins salve, like slathered it all on my chest and sent me out to school anyway because they had paid for the field trip. So, okay. Um, you all know that you're part of my personal therapy journey. I apologize for that. So, but so okay, back to the story. So he was like, I don't really want to go. So I'm like, I can't, I don't want to be because he's maturing. I'm trying to help him learn how to make good decisions. And I don't know, I don't want to just be like, hey, go, you're gonna go, because some people paid. And so I was like, okay, now walk me through why not. He said, Well, none of the schools are on my list. And I was like, okay, so what does that mean? Well, I it seems like it'll be a waste of time because. I'll be going to places that I'm pretty comfortable. I'm not going to want to, I'm going to be visiting places. I'm pretty comfortable. I'm not going to go anyway. And I said, you're going to be a scientist, right? He was like, yeah. I said, so you realize that part of this whole thing is that you're going to do thousands of experiments that will yield no results. There are some scientists who spend their entire lives looking for something and in their careers, not finding it, but building a body of work that other people can stand on and take it to the next level. I was like, so if you're not ready to do any experimentation, then maybe science ain't for you. And we need to talk more than just this college tour. And that's the thing about the kids, about us and my family. If you hit them with logic, like we're stuck. But like if it makes sense, we're, we're going to go with it. So he went there and, and he got back. And I was concerned about when he got back because I was, you know, because I, I, he's a great kid. So I don't want to just see him salty, like, you know, wasting my time, blah, blah, blah. I said, so how was it? He was like, I found out where I'm going to go to college. So what happened? Where, where? He was like, because I'm thinking, oh, Hampton probably got him. Because, you know, Hampton got that, that HBCU royalty or Howard may have gotten him. Or he may have fell in love with his mother and his brother's alma mater, Morgan or whatever. He said North Carolina and he said, whoa, 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 whoa. We don't even know nobody down here. Why, why that one? He said, I don't know. He said, I got off the bus. I got on the campus. I walked around and I was like, I have to go here. This is a kid that had, so, okay. Yeah, he doesn't watch the show, so I can tell y'all. He This dude, he had, there was a little girl he liked in like the sixth grade. Why did he have a six month plan on how he was going to eventually ask her out? So like, this is what this dude does. He like, to t not even ask her out, but like to tell her he liked her. Um, this is how much he planned. But for him, it was like, I, he's like, I can't explain it. And that, I, and, I, and I tell that story, and I'm, I know James is back there like, his mom, his, do I have any time left? No, it's our show, bro. We good. We good. You got time. But I, I just want to set the stage on why I think this is important. My, my, so, and let me tell you a little bit about Diddy. Diddy's SAT score was 15, 
1560 or 1540. Um, he started college with 85 AP credits. He had gotten into MIT, Carnegie Mellon, uh, Cornell, UMBC, College Park. I'm sorry, he got in everywhere he applied to. MIT took him. And he was telling me how when he was there and he was getting to know the other kids in the Honors College, and he was kind of, they were asking everybody, you know, kind of share their stats or whatever. Everybody trying to see where everybody, you know, we all here together, but you yeah, see where we're stratified. And he was talking about their stats. They were like, Dad, you could have got into MIT. He was like, I mean, I did. And they looked at him and they said, wait, you got into MIT and you still came here. And he said, yes, absolutely. From not wanting to go on this now, he didn't say stupid, but it was that whole, uh, this thing about, and again, I don't want to do black people stuff, but like MIT has accepted, you know, like it wasn't a question whether MIT was going to accept it. And he got on North Carolina a and campus and said, this is where I have to go. And he's there. He's going to graduate in 2020. Oh, you know what? Oh, I'm glad I got you on. You, oh, James. Okay. Well, okay. Sorry. You see how I lost professionalism? Okay. I apologize. I like, I got all excited. I got to. I just remembered I got a, I just got a brand new piece of news that I want to share with him. So okay, all right now I'm, I'm gonna bring him on up. You know, it's, oh shit, it's been like ten minutes. Okay, all right, I apologize. Okay, brother, I am so sorry. I know that was a long <laughs> reading. I was trying to, but but I think the story is important it uh, is. because it really indicates to me at least the importance of exposing kids to things even when they think, hell no, this is no way. All right, so. Hi, brother. Why don't you introduce yourself to everybody? I'm, I'm so excited just to jump in. I keep forgetting they don't know you all. So tell them about yourself. All right. How y'all doing out there? My name, um, I originated, um, originally come um, from um, Pontiac, Michigan, um, class of 91 high school, Pontiac Northern. Um, I graduated from Morgan State University, um, class of 2000 with a business administration major. Um, had an internship my last semester in, in college, um, got hired immediately after I graduated um, and started right into the, into the work, work, work world. Um, started in corporate America for about nine years. Eh, I didn't like it. So, I, you know, I, I didn't like being told what to do. So I decided to I wanted to start my own my own business. So I started an accounting and tax and tax business. Um, and after a while. Yeah, wait, you know, wait, 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 wait. I want to because okay, so you. So this is the cool part about talking to somebody who knows you, because you notice he didn't even. Some guests are like, "What is he stopping me?" James is like, "Oh no, this is the way it's gonna work." <laughs> I want I want to anchor in. Tell them what what your the business you start because I want them to understand that you, that the the melanin you are associated with is also in a field of independence that is not always there. So I want to I want to make sure they know this is possible. Right. So so I, when I started in corporate America, I was working for a CPA company. Um, and then I realized that it honestly, it just hit me, came to work one day and I was like, I was just sitting around looking around. I was like, nah, this ain't <laughs> what I want to do the rest of my life. I don't want to be told when I, when I, when I, when I can go on vacation, when I can, when I can take a break, it just, it just wasn't in my spirit. Mm -hmm. I just got, I just started typing my resignation later. Uh, and I, but I, one thing I did know, I didn't know what I was going to do. But one thing I did know that I can do what I'm doing in this office on my own. I had enough knowledge, I have enough experience to 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 be somebody's accountant, mm -hmm. to be somebody's tax professional. Um, I didn't need a CPA license behind me to be able to do it, and that's mm -hmm. and that's the direction I took. I said, "Oh, you know what? I can start this start on." So initially, initially, this is a funny story. Initially, I did not had any clients i didn't even i didn't even tell my wife i had quit <laughs> every morning every morning i would get up when she got up and we would leave together i would drive around the corner get back in the driveway <laughs> get right back in the bed i watched the history channel for about six months and and then one day i was like this is kind of crazy when i was like eh, i don't need deodorant on i ain't going nowhere and that's when i realized hey Gone it's too far. Get out there and, the, and start and start making connections. And I was I'm a real personal person, so a lot of the clients I had with the CPA company was calling me like, "Yo, you not you not working today? You not working this week?" Um, I was like, and so I was explaining to them that I had I had resigned, 
And they was like, hey, you want to you want to do some accounting work with us? Blah, blah, blah. Next thing you know, four, three, four or five clients later, I was like, you know what? I can I can I can sustain this on my own. Um, and I and I built I built I built a nice little small business on my own. Mm-hmm. Uh, and a few years later, and, and it, it wasn't really the money. It was just it was more so my time. My time, I, I value my time. And that's what I teach a lot of my kids on my on my college tour. Value your time. Don't let nobody mm-hmm. eat up your time because you'll never get that time back again. Um, so about five or six years into working for myself, um, I said I decided I said, no, I'm gonna start a foundation. Um, and I, so we started, so me and Dr. Ryan uh, for the Ryan Institute started big up Dante. Um, I'm yep, sorry, can, everybody. Uh, big up Dr. Ryan. I'm sorry. And uh, his <laughs> wife, Jayika. Yes, sir. Sorry. Right. So, so with my fraternity, we started doing SAT prep classes. So I was in charge of the educational department. So I just went out and just started really, really recruiting students um, to participate in our SAT prep classes. So we would have classes um, like every three months for about a, for about a month, month long of, of, of workshops. Mm-hmm. Um, the very next year, um, it was it was around the time my son was starting to look at colleges. So I, so I ended up just putting together um, a college tour and the Ivy Leagues came into place because he was looking at Harvard and looking at um, Yale. Mm-hmm. So, so we started we started to just, you know, pull the pull colleges together that he wanted to look at. And that's thing you know, he invited a few of his friends. They invited a few of their friends. That's thing you know, I'm asking a fraternity. Hey, we need to do a college tour. Um, so, so we started doing college college tours um, to the Ivy League student, um, colleges and to the HBCU colleges. One of, one of the biggest differences between the two, um, so I've been doing it since 2015. One of the biggest differences between the two colleges, um, I think the Ivy League colleges has more resources. Oh yeah, Their resources are just it's just it's just it's, it's, it's hard to explain the the level of resources that they have. Compared to the HBCU schools, I had a oh, student. Yeah. I had a student on a tour at Harvard. Um, take us up into a, one of his buildings, and on the top of the building was this huge, huge telescope, and we can look into space. He had access to it. Oh, so like a was, like I'm a student, a student leader, and I can just go up here. Right. <laughs> wow. Um, so to me, those type of resources are just unmatched when you compare it to the HBCU schools. However, however, the flip side of that, what's so special about the HBCU schools to me, just just one graduating from one graduating from HBCU, Morgan State University, um, and visiting all of the different HBCUs in the country, the biggest difference on their side is they're they're administration, their, their professors, um, they care a lot more about the student. Um, mm-hmm. and it's more of a family family atmosphere. To me, the education is still still pretty much uh, the same um, minus, minus the additional resources, resources that, they, yeah. that they may have. And so one of the other things that I've noticed, so I graduated from a PWI, University of Maryland, Baltimore County, go Trevers. Um, and, and but one of the things I did have an opportunity to work at Morgan and have been working alongside several other HBCUs in different capacities. One of the other things that I have also noticed is that um, HBCUs are more welcoming to students from backgrounds that other institutions wouldn't necessarily be accommodating. Correct. Um, they understand what it means uh, that you are you may have uh, foster care in your background. Um, that you may have, you may have uh, family abuse, CPS. You may have limited academic uh, proficiency. Uh, um, one of my friends, she was doing the summer bridge program, actually at Morgan, um, mm-hmm. and she in her summer bridge program had valedictorians, and, and it was like the top tier of students in Baltimore City schools, like you know the ones who graduated. Like in the top, and then many of them were going to Morgan. She had the program specifically for those who graduated in the top of their classes in high school, but still were deficient in being able to take the placement test in like Math 101 or, or, or English 101. They still needed remedial work. Mm-hmm. And so to your point, additionally, it's not just that the, uh, additionally, it's not just that the HBCUs don't have the resources, the, the financial and the, the academic resources. When I say academic resources, like 
equipment that yeah. the a, that the uh, uh, Ivy Leagues, PWIs, especially Ivy Leagues have. It's also that they're dealing with students that those other schools don't even consider as like they're not even real students. Right. They may go. They may go. The students that a Morgan or a, a Coppin or a Bowie or a, a UMES may open their 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 campus to Harvard or MIT. What? Who? Right. Oh well, let's get one of you all. Let's you all have a, a Hunger Games academic battle, and right. whoever wins the winner will celebrate you. And look how wonderful we are at our Ivy League school. Because we look at this one. This one was one of the look. Well, look yeah. how, and it becomes and and again, not saying everybody's just doing tokenism, but the sad part is about stuff like that. Everybody looks the same way. It's not like they wear t-shirts like I will treat you like a token. Mm -hmm. They all get their clothes from the same J. Crew <laughs> catalog. And they show up and you're like, well, which one are you? Right. And so because and, and I want to make sure that that is uh, highlighted because you're right. It's the same type of education, same quality and caliber. But they're working with students who have fewer resources, not just the school resources, mm -hmm. but the students come to the table in many cases with fewer resources. Right. And they're still there to support. Mm -hmm. So. So, yeah. all right. So. I, I appreciate telling the context about uh, how you came up with that, because I think it's important for people to understand, because mm -hmm. if they're, you know, a lot of people, for some of them, college tours are just perfunctory. It's yeah. something you do, you know, in case you want to go someplace, you know, just to make sure, because what you're going to do, not go. Um, mm -hmm. But talk about some of the things you've seen over the years doing the college tours and the benefits that the students have experienced. I, I'll say this, and, and, and I'm going I'm, I'm to give a, a little bit of a rundown. Okay. Some of the things that we that we also provide. Oh, um, cool. Yeah. Um, we also we also one of the primary things we try to do is is prepare students not only not only for college but for life. Um, so 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 we do when we put our program to, together, um, it's intentional. Everything we do, we try to do it intentionally. We mm -hmm. we make sure that we have uh, monthly SAT prep classes. Um, and we accommodate students that that work. Um, mm -hmm. We do, we do SAT cl um, prep classes on the weekends and in the evenings. Um, we do virtual virtual college tours um, to accommodate. I mean, the virtual college tours actually kind of sprung out of the pandemic, right? Which was a great, which was to me a blessing in disguise. Yeah, because, there, there's a lot of it was a, it was a jacked up situation, but yeah. there were some good things that came out of it. right. So it allowed it allowed um, us to be able to expand our reach of of the number of youth that we were, we've been able to to work with. So we've been able to work with students in Spain, Canada, mm. California, Texas. I mean, it just it just expanded everywhere. Wow! I didn't even know that. Congratulations, man! Yes, it is crazy. Good it, business, man. Crazy. But it's very it, it was very interesting. Um, so we do provide the virtual college tour. We just went back to do our on-campus, on-campus college tour. One of the we do um, fast for workshops. We do essay, essay, college essay, um, and resume writing workshops to better prepare them for to um, to be accepted in, into college. Mm -hmm. uh, and and it's, if they don't choose college, making sure that their resume is tight enough that they can go out and and, and apply for a job or apply for an internship or what what have you. Um, but one thing, one big part of our program that sprung out of our um, college tours is, is was, was in 2017. I, I, we were on the bus um, traveling from one school to the other. And I just started talking to a couple of students about some failed businesses that I've had. I've had many failed businesses. And, and, and the, the reason I was telling them about my failed business was because I thought that they would learn more about my failures than they would from my success stories. Um, because they, but because if I'm telling them what I did wrong, maybe, maybe if they decide to do that. So what sprung out of that conversation was a, um, a business pitch competition. So we were just having a, a broad discussion about different businesses, how to set them up, mm -hmm. um, um, the functions of them, for-profit versus non-profit, um, LLCs versus C corps, and you know, just telling them the pro. The I was just giving them the basic concepts of it, right? 
um, for, for, for teenagers, they, they were able to grasp that really quick. So we separated them into groups um, and had them come up with their own business, their own business strategy um, um, to come up with their own budget and to be able to, to pitch that business idea to everybody on the bus. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then, you know, I would give them cash prizes or computers, yeah, yeah, yeah. things like that, just to keep them inspired. From that, launched my entrepreneurship program in Baltimore City. Um, I started um, over at Coppin Academy, um, being a volunteer, just, hey, I, I want to just Oh, be a, big, I'm sorry, big up Principal Allman, big up Principal yeah, Allman over there at Coppin Academy. He is the greatest. Um, then I started uh, doing some work over at Douglas, Douglas High School. Um, now I'm in now I'm in St. Francis. I'm trying to get back into Reginald F. Lewis. Haven't been able to do that since the pandemic. But mm, I'm get uh, uh, slow up, slow up on that one for a little bit, partner. Call at me. Call at me off camera. I'm uh, might need to pull your coat to the game. You might not want to do that right now. All right, all right. Um, so to me, all right, we focus on college readiness and entrepreneurship. Primarily because I'm looking at all of the students on my bus. Not all of them are going to go to college. And not even just not all of them are going to college. Even the ones that go to college, I think about all the people that I went to college with. How many of them actually graduated? And what do they do after that? So I was thinking of a different strategy of, hey, you can still be successful whether you go to college or not. Right. Um, so that's when we just started doing our entrepreneurship program. We, we actually do it on the, on the bus and in 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 the high school high schools um so that's the direction that we we've been we've been going we've been going on over the past couple of years that's what's up man that's what's up and um tell us a little bit about um uh, well we're gonna get to the successes and 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 some of the things we'll say that to the end because I, I love that it's like dessert mm-hmm. um but talk to us a little bit about some of the things that parents have learned in working with you because so one of the things that I also want you all to know about this program, and it's funny that you you haven't mentioned it yet. It's been like a half an hour. Um, <laughs> there's a lot of workshops that they do for parents. Like there's a lot of communication with the parents, not just like your kid is messing up. You might want to come and get them or where's your balance or whatever. It's like, hey, this is what we're teaching the kids. If you all want to come through and find out about it. Hey, we're talking about entrepreneurship. If you want to come through and find out about it. Hey, here's, come watch your kids do this. And it's a, a lot of parental engagement. And one of the things that I saw was that some of the workshops or, or some of the engagements, even some of the like random conversations at the bowling alleys or whatever, when we're doing the fundraisers, they changed the way that some of the parents saw their roles. Mm-hmm. They started when I remember one uh, one workshop you did at the uh, bowling alley was kind of an orientation for parents. Just this is what's going to happen. And they make sure. And a lot of parents, especially, I don't remember because you were talking about the fraternity things and stuff mm-hmm. like that. And they were like, well, and some people were like, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, I heard of fraternities. Yeah, 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 yeah. And it was clearly blanks. And you, and it was an educational yeah. opportunity. Right. To really, because if their kids decide to become part of a fraternity or sorority, that's going to have an implication on the family. And the parents had no idea what was going on. And I remember yeah. my mother and father were like, so you wanna you walk in line like uh, and I was like nah whoa 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 whoa, whoa. yeah we, we so, transition so. in decades now so you can right. we don't <laughs> right. so, so, so we do we we do a lot of uh, family engagement um, to actually be on our college tour one of the very first things we do is have um, uh, family engagement at Morgan State University we kind of do that once a year this year we're gonna do it twice twice a year uh, this year we're gonna do it twice. Um, but the the engagement that we do at Morgan State University, we want the parents to be able to see um, what the program is going to look like on a day to day basis when I take their kids kids away. Another thing, it, it helps with the comfort the, the comfort level of parents because um, a lot of the parents they're, they're the helicopter parents they they haven't really let their their kids really out of their sight and and on their own to try to help them make 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 their own decisions. And, and that's why it's, it's really important. And, and I want to say my my program to allow the kids to go out um, and experience things on their own and try to make make decisions on their own. So so we do that 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 college it's called a college readiness day um, where we get all the parents together and then we I bring out a lot of the basket a lot of the coaches from Morgan State University 
Um, they come oh, out. Yeah, yeah. And speak. I bring out the different fraternities and sororities. They come out, step, and talk about their the, the history of their, or, their individual organizations. Um, then we'll we'll attend the basketball game, and then we'll 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 um, do a tour um, of the campus. Um, and then we have another event, a family engagement event, where it's either a bowling or a skating event. And it helps to, to 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 get the kids to socialize with each other, but not but not, not only that, but it also helps the parents to be able to meet me, meet our chaperones, to get to know us a little bit better. Because and other parents, right? And other parents, right? So so we try to keep everybody connected and learning at all at the same time while they while they're having fun. They don't really, sometimes they don't really know they're learning stuff, right? Right? But right? Because right. like I said, everything is done intentional. And and with the purpose, um, so they, they, while we're having fun, they're learning things, learn, learning things as well. Also, do a event, um, and I always make this optional. I invite everybody out um, to my church um, because if I'm gonna take your kid away for five days, I want blessings of safe travel and mercy from to and from my destination. That's just that's just me. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's what we. That's the, some of the things that we do. Now, a couple of we do quite a few things on the tour to keep the students engaged. Now, I'm not sure if anybody on, on here is a, a, that's listening has um, ever took a group of kids, teenagers away, but yeah. they're not the same teenagers that you have in your house. They're just not. <laughs> they're going to do their best to try to sneak out, to sneak out the room, sneak into the girls' rooms or sneak into the boys' rooms, or they're going to listen to dirty music with a bunch of cursing in it. That's that's just what they do. I, I was a teenager. That's when my mom and parents wasn't around. That's what I listen to. I, I yeah. like listening to the ghetto boys. I oh like yeah, my mom was always playing tricks on me. I like listening to NWA. That's just that was just me, but that was just our music. And it's and the same thing with them. That's their music. My job and my chaperone's job is to catch them and make sure that they understand the repercussions of their actions and and how it could not only affect them but affect everybody else on, on the tour. Um, so, so, so while we're on the tour, I, I'm talking about this year because I implemented a program because, you know, I, I have a lot of programs on my tour to eliminate their free time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So one of the programs I implemented was, um, um, I call it the, the Hills Day. So I noticed that every year I've been teaching the men how to tie ties, which is important. Mm -hmm. a, lot, a lot of them don't know how to tie a half wisner or a full wisner, so we we teach them that. But I also show the young ladies that as well. So I always tell them, I'm I'm a married man, but nothing is more more beautiful than when my wife fix my tie, <laughs> or 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 when she when she picks the right tie out for me. I mm -hmm. love, it. and that's why I show the women how to tie ties. But this year we also added teaching the women how to walk in heels. How to walk professionally in hills because they're at the, they're going to be at that age where it's time for them to go out for um, job interviews. Like if you go on, if you're applying for the Ivy Leagues, you're going to get interviewed. Um, so being able to walk in hills is, is important. And when it's time for graduation, nobody you know how you see them when they walk. Yeah, what do they call it? Look like yeah. a baby giraffe. You got the wall. <laughs> so so we added that to our program. That's really um, cool. One of the bigger parts is. One of the things that I like the most is, is our elevated pitch competition. Mm -hmm. We teach kids how to be able to sell themselves in a matter of 30, 30 seconds to a minute. Um, that is crucial to the, to the rest of their lives. No matter what happens in life, just like today, just like today, William was like, one of the very first questions he asked me was, tell me something about your program. It, it, yeah. It's no different. I just gave him my elevator pitch. Right. Yeah. Um, so, so that's what we teach teach the kids, and that's what they they when they come home, they know how to sell themselves. They know a lot of things about themselves, and and we always start with a basic construct of of what an elevator pitch is. So, mm -hmm. so make sure the very first thing you want to tell them your full name, and make sure you say it strongly. Tell them what high school you go to, what grade you in, what your GPA is. If you don't have a favorable GPA, say say I'm an aspiring 4.0 student. Um, tell them, three, you know, tell them three adjectives to describe you, describe yourself, mm -hmm. and then tell them what your future plans is, or or ask them a question. What do you, what do you, what do you get? What do you want out of this, out of this uh, meeting that you're tr trying to get? Do you want an investment? Do you want another meeting? Um, what do you want? Ask that. Um, so um, they every every year, man, the kids do an excellent job at it. 
Um, and I'll, every year I post all the, all the videos of them working on it and, and the finishing product. Product. Okay, so wait, real quick, I just want to know because I was so one of the things that I will I was happy to have you here because I was looking at some of your stuff on Facebook and my little download finger said no no you gotta ask them first yeah you gotta ask them first so can we use it in air in this in this show oh sure sure oh, cool 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 because yeah. I really want because again like when I tell you this, the work that you've done with the kids um and, and people don't understand how them just feeling comfortable will change how they engage college, period. It is right. amazing just that level of comfort. Like, oh, I know something other people don't. I've already been here. Oh, let me show you where the cafeteria is. Right. It sounds so petty, so <laughs> minuscule. But, yo, all of a sudden, you got swag because you know where the cafe is first. Yeah. And, oh, no, no, <laughs> don't go that way. Come on, go this way. Right. <laughs> it, it, it is, it's so funny because, but, but you, like I said, you know what I'm talking about? Like that, to know something, to be in the middle of all your periods, to be like the, that, and that's one of the benefits right. of the college tour. That is one of the benefits of all of this engagement beforehand because it literally can change the entire trajectory of their college career. It's different showing up than, oh, James, yeah, yeah, I remember me from the first day as opposed to, oh my God, I don't know nobody here. Right. Nobody's going to talk to me. Oh my God. Oh my God. I, Not I, even the same experience. I eliminate that that question right there. That that whole statement because from the from the time that the door closes, we start programming with with a programmer called I. You know me. I know, I know you. You know me. So soon as that door closes, I send the kids. We all in the group chat. I send them. I send them a list of questions. About four questions and an open ended question and a uh, tell me a secret about you. So everybody is sitting next to each other so that everybody got these questions. So now they got to ask the person right next to them and they got to ask the, ask the, you know, they, they, they got to switch. So every three minutes from the time we get from, from, from um, our Baltimore location, our first stop is always Bowie. That's about an hour, 45 minutes to an hour. They're switching every three minutes, asking every single person on the bus. So by the time we get to Howard or North or Norfolk, they have met, 45 pe different people that's been that's been on the bus and been on the tour and now everybody is a lot more comfortable a lot more familiar familiar with uh -huh. Uh -huh. um so we do i think we do a really really excellent job uh with making sure that that the college tour is not just about education now I know, that, I know that sound crazy no no so, you I, I, I tell it well, I, 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 again i got evidence that it worked so like you, you ain't selling nothing to the choir, right? Go ahead. A lot of parents see. See the thing about it. A lot of parents tend to forget about. I, I call it that forty percent about college. That's going to help your students stay in college, because when you don't have those kind of conversations and you don't show them the other other side of college, other than just the books and going to class and the library. No, they need to be talking about dorm life. They need to be talking about the food. If you want to, you want, you cannot send a child off to college and not talk to them about internships. Internships, especially for HBCU school students, internships is what I call the equilibrium when it when you got to go out there and compete against the PWIs and the and the, and the Ivy League Ivy League schools. There's only only one way to 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 balance that out is to get internships. That way, supervisors, managers uh, know who you are. They know your work ethic. Typically, most people want to hire somebody that they know, know know what their work ethic ethics are and got a little bit of history with. And that's why when we, by the time you leave my tour, you already know. Internships mm -hmm. is so key to the success of a college student. Um, that that that, that is, 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 is it's hard to compare to to any anything else. So, so you you don't, you don't even got to because I got you on this one. This is the cool part about having I got receipts on this. Later. I don't come <laughs> tell you what I think. I tell you what I know. So uh, Diddy uh, got his internship uh, after his first year, his mm -hmm. second year, this third year they offered him an internship. He said no. You know why he said no? His mother had already paid for a, a vacation, and she was like, "No, if, if if you got the internship, you can go." He was like, "No, because okay, mm -hmm. I think he might be bringing the girlfriend on the trip." Oh lord! <laughs> and again, I was like, "I eh, okay, all right, yeah." But guess what? The, but let me give you a sense of and and be careful because remember, I told you that he turned down MIT to go to North Carolina A and T, right? Right. 
they he told them that the four weeks came in the middle the part of the four weeks that they wanted him to go to Botswana to do research on coding on aerosol dispersal dispersal um that uh they were they needed four weeks he was like the vacation is in it they came back to him and was like hey well would you be willing to do it for two weeks mm. and they were like when tell us when your vacation is and we'll try to see and I was like don't nobody do that for me, dog. I got right. like degrees and and like I still know that, bro. Uh -huh. <laughs> but, but that's what, and, and so again, big ups to y'all because like he was keyed into that internship part. I was yeah. in, in real talk. I was more focused on him speeding through the classes so he can finish with his uh, master's or fast on his doctorate. But he was like, "Now nah, I'm gonna go ahead and get the internship." Mm -hmm. And I was like, "Again, you make good decisions. You've been doing well so far. So I'm gonna let it go." And boom. He has like he he studied muons. I didn't even know that there was a thing called a muon. Mm -hmm. I didn't know. Uh, I, I had to buy it, do it straight up. Oh, I keep forgetting we on camera, not like just talking to you. My fault. But I had to <laughs> look at the camera. Like let me tell you what happened. Um, I had to. I, I I literally had to go out and buy a quantum physics for dummies books in between uh -huh. his semester so I could keep up with him when he got back home. <laughs> Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> but yeah, so you are absolutely right about the internships, and you all do a great job of really hammering that in, and and not just you got to get one, you got to get one. Because yeah. when I was an undergrad, everybody was like, "Yeah, I get one." I was like, "Okay," and I got there. So my first internship, I was at the mayor's office. It was the largest waste of time I have ever had. The most exciting thing I did was send a thirteen-page legal size fax to Seoul, Korea. It was my first international fax. But that was it. And so yeah. I was like, I, this is what y'all wanted me to do? Like, you, so this is how I don't like this. No, thank but, you. But, 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 it, but that was the key point of it uh, uh, is that not only does it help you uh, with your with your with your career, but it also let you know what you don't want to do for the rest of your life. Absolutely. I, I had an internship with General Motors and most of my family are from Michigan. They all work in the plant. But when I had that internship, I knew. I knew from the second day I was there that I did not want to do this the rest of my life. And that helped me out a lot. It, it put me on a different career path. I was like, there's no way I'm doing that. No so, so, so how this is, I bet mean, I use biz, uh, dating as a metaphor for business all the time. You might be able to do it for academics as well. Internships are like dating. OK. All right. You don't want to commit to a job, you know, like we I put a ring on no job till I see what you got. Like, you know, internship a little bit while I'm volunteering, maybe a little bit of pay. You give me a little bit of benefits. I give you a little bit of work and we see if we can grow somewhere. I'm going to work on a, a metaphor. I'm going to work on it. That might actually might actually write a book about that dating, dating an internship or something. Uh -huh. <laughs> All right. So so. Tell us about, and, and you know, I also want to save some time so we can add in the videos about them doing the pictures. That, that It's so cool to watch. It is so mm -hmm. cool to watch. Like, just to watch them stand in and just spit who they are, and it's just like, oh, it, yeah. it is really cool. Because a lot of times we see the images, uh, like, and again, not saying that they're not the type of kids who would be put on front store of gang signs or twerking. Not saying that they're not. But it's so beautiful to have a set of images that are not those images. Right. Because right. even if that's something you do, because, you know, I got, I got habits and, and, and proclivities. OK, I'm mm -hmm. not taking pictures of them for you, but mm -hmm. it is. But those are the types of images we see when people are talking about black kids, especially right. that age, that demographic, Tatiana's and, and you know, thug life and da 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 da. And it's like to, to see, you know, 40 kids just like mm -hmm. I'm trying to get my education. Like, I, I mean, whatever. And, and the cool part is. I'm sorry, I'm I, I'm doing all the talking. My bad, dude. But, but I, it's like I, I've seen it because like they're they're different kids. That's the other part too. It's not like you all get the same kid from every school because you know right. more. Because normally when you think about field trips from school, there's there's a certain type of kid that goes, and you can always tell when it's not going to be a good field trip because there's at least two kids that don't look like every other kid. It's like oh yeah, those are one. They get on the bus a little too active. They like a little. Uh, they are oh, okay, but you all. Have, all of the kids show up and you all have a way to manage them. I think some of it is the family engagement and some of it is just the brothers that you bring and the sisters you bring with you. Talk a little bit about how that is. Cause I know that was one of my things. I'm like, so you want me to send my kids 
mm-hmm. all over the United States, and I'm not even like going to be remotely there. Now. What if? Yeah. Oh my God! What if yeah. somebody catches them? A lot of parents sometimes. A lot of parents want to go on our tour um, because of the the uncomfortable feeling of of um, so many males being on the tour, uh, but. With with the with the prerequisites to even to be on our tour, we we, we get them to a comfort level. So so that by by the time it's actually time for us to go on the tour, everybody's mm-hmm. comfortable. But I, I'm gonna talk about my team a little bit. Um, I work I pretty much work with some of the same people every every year. Yeah. On our tour, um, my nephew Harold um, Scandrick he flies in from Michigan um, to be on the tour, and it, and this helped him out as well because. <laughs> It inspired him to go back to college and get, wow. his, degree, and get his degree. He graduated last year um, with with his bachelor's oh, yes. degree. Big um, up, Harold. That's big, yeah. that's big, yo. Big. That's yeah. that's good news, yo. Congratulations, right. Harold. So he's been on my tour since 2017. Um, um, Derek uh, Derek Hamlin. Um, it's my line brother. He's <laughs> yeah. he's a lawyer. He's an active lawyer and, and a comedian. Uh, he, he wears he wears a couple of hats, but he he's my lawyer. Um, he's he's been on the tour since 2018, um, um, and then we had um, I added a, 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 a chaperone and business partner, Nick Miles. He's a he's a coach, um, and, and and this is our intentional. Some of the best motivational speakers are coaches, uh, and that's one of the reasons I added him to to our college tour, um, just to keep. It, always working with the kids, always trying to inspire them and inspire, inspire students. Uh, and he's been working with kids since, I mean, since he left college, he started at the y, YMCA, YMCA on 33rd. Now he's, he, he's has one of the best, one of the top 10 basketball programs, high school basketball programs in the country. Um, wow. and, we, and we added another young lady, um, Renanda um, Johnson. She has her own, um, our, our own nonprofit um, and used to working with young, with young ladies um, in the, I think in the Bowie PG area. Um, so that, okay. that's pretty, pretty much my team. All of us have a wealth of experience um, and working, working with teens. So we know, our, know our way around, around the block a little bit. All right. That's what's up. And honestly that, that, I mean, I, I know just about everybody you mentioned there, and they're all top quality people. And, <clears throat> what's more, not just that they're top quality in the level of their competence, like their technical ability professionally or whatever, mm-hmm. but they actually give a damn about what they're doing. This isn't just like, you know, oh, let me just show up. And because again, I don't know if you all have ever been on a trip with a bunch of kids. Mm-hmm. I, I would not go on the college tour. Mm-hmm. I, and again, I was asked, no, thank you. No, thank you at all. Now, I don't like going on vacation with my kids because it's like there's so much stuff to think about, worry about. Can I get no, 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 no. But you all do it every year and it's volunteer. And these are brothers and sisters that are really trying to make sure that these kids have an opportunity to, to transform their lives and really not have to deal with a lot of the stuff that many of us still have to deal with. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It's the talent and tenth taking it to the place that it should be. Mm-hmm. And, and the kids, the kids, you have to be on the tour just to see the change in their eyes and to see, see the moment that they find, like I can tell, cause I'm always looking at them at body language. I can tell when they found their school. When I was at Morgan, let me see when I, I went to a, a PWI before I got to Morgan, uh, Northeastern Christian junior college out in Pennsylvania. Um, and I got to Morgan. I, I just fill out an application. They sent me an acceptance letter and I just drove up to Morgan. I, I knew one person at, at Morgan at the time. Um, <laughs> And he lived in Baltimore. And that's all he talked about was Morgan, Morgan, Morgan. So when I got up here, I kind of parked off of uh, the, the, I think that was Helen, um, and then walked up behind where the old sofa library was. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And when I passed the library, this is when when registration used to be in McKeldin Center, right right on the bridge. Mm-hmm, so when I passed mm-hmm. the library, and I looked to my left, and I just see a sea of black people. And it, I will, it stopped me in my tracks. I literally just stopped for like five minutes and was like, this is amazing. That's when I knew this is my home. Mm-hmm. And that's what I, that's what I look at. And that's what I see when I see a lot of the kids, when they finally make this. And a lot of times when they come up to me and tell me, I'll be, I already know. 
Mm-hmm. I, I, I already know which school you wanted. I already know which school you you decided on because yes. it's it's just a feeling of of this is my home. Not not yes. like hey, this is the building I'm I'm trying to get a degree from. No, this is my home, and that's how I felt when I when I got to Morgan. Yeah, that's that's exactly the way Diddy described it. He was like, I have to go here because, mm-hmm. and and it was so funny because. Up until that point, it was like, uh, I guess it depends on who's going to give us the most money. I guess it depends. Mm-hmm. And it's like, and and, and I, the thing that, because he, he went on the Ivy League tour with you before he went on the HBCU tour with yeah. you. Yeah. So when he had gone on the Ivy League tour, he got to the MIT, what, the buildings at MIT, and he was like, Dad, I just walked around and the buildings look like sadness. Like the build, they just look old and like nobody really cared about anything. I was like, uh, damn, I didn't. Uh-uh. When he was at, it, it wasn't, it wasn't Hampton. It was, you know, and it was again particular. And he has, he has flourished, not just as a student, as a scientist, but, but as a man. Um, and, and as a dad, I am really proud of how he has shown up there. Um, and and again, literally was trying to get out of going on the whole trip so he could sit around and play Yu Gi Oh all week on spring break. Mm-hmm. Like and and and, I, and then that's why I want to make sure that I I, I want to tell that story in particular because I want people to understand like these are it would have been easy honestly. Well, if we want to have some real talk. It would have been any easier honestly back then, especially because my wife and I. We were exes by that point, and she had spent the money. So, you know, the little petty part of me was like, I mean. <laughs> All right. But but that decision could have gone either way. Mm-hmm. And, and and that the fact that he went literally has changed the trajectory of my family. Mm-hmm. So, so. Now let's tell them how they can get with the college tour. Because because guess what? It's not just he got a bus for you. He got some virtual stuff. He got classes. He got stuff. So how can they get in contact with you? How can they make sure that they stay in contact with MTM? All right. You you want to reach MTM Foundation? Um, check us out on our website, www.mtmcollegetours.org. Um, or you can call me um uh, 443-768-6939. Nick, come on, dude. Stop playing. Stop playing. It's, 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 it's on video. Say it slow. You know these people, they try, try, try to pull out a pen while you talk. All right. Playing. Write it down now. mtmcollegetours.org. Mm-hmm. Or you can also call me at 443-768-6939. Cool, uh, cause I always, cause again, I'm, dude, I'm trying to make sure you ain't missing no money on these streets. I ain't trying to have that. Like I would have called him, but I thought that I didn't, I didn't catch that last number. No sir, no sir. Y'all need to call him. Our our next college tour is going to be August the 22nd through the 26th. Um, we're also going to be having a summer program, entrepreneurship um, programs called the CEO Club. Um, it's going to be virtual. It's going to start July the 5th. And it's going to end um, August the 20. I want to say August the 23rd. No, I'm sorry. August the 19th. So okay. July the 5th to um, August and August the 19th is going to be virtual. Um, at the end of our um, CEO club is going to be our business pitch competition. Um, we're going to be giving out with over a thousand dollars in prizes. I think the last time I had a bunch of investors that came on, um, friends that own businesses, and we gave out over five thousand dollars outside of the thousand dollar prize that I give to the first place prize winner. All right, so make sure that you keep us in the loop and make sure you get back on here so as the time goes, gets closer and draws nigh, we can get people out here to support it and, and watch because, again, these kids are out here doing some real stuff. Like, this, this is the, these are the training grounds. This is where it happens. This is where we help shape them. A lot of times we talk about, well, how did they get out there and not know how to do that? Well, when did you stop to tell them? This is where we stop to tell them. Exactly. So I'm sorry again. I, dude, you know what? I'm gonna let you talk eventually, Nick. You gotta come back so you do more talking next time. That's what's gonna happen. You gonna come back and you gonna talk. Hey, hey, it's it's a it's a collaboration of shared experiences because you've gone through it and yeah. you listen to your son tell you the stories of of of, of how great of an experience he's had. Um, and it's just and, and, and I'm sorry, real quick. I, I, I'm talking about one son, but both of them 
had an amazing time. Actually, that's what actually got LJ to mm -hmm. end up coming back to Morgan after he left Temple. Okay. Because he was like, he went to Morgan in the college. Because before, I mean, hell, we lived right around the right around the corner. He was yeah. like, I'm not going there. I'm I'm not going there. And then after the college, he was like, I mean, it's not until, that bad. Until, you, like, see, really until cool. you see what's so great about it. That, yeah. that, that's what's going to make you, make you change your mind. And we and, try and to the, go out there to show you, not only show you the great parts of it, but to show you the, 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 the negative and bad parts of it as well. Right. So um, you can make a good decision. Right. Because it's hard. To me, it's hard to make a decision um, when all you hear is the best things about a university. Um, and that's one thing that, that is so different from us. Like a lot of times I don't even allow the university to give my tours. Um, I, I get student leaders, student organizations to give the tour because then you can get real answers out of them. Right. And then we also spend a, a good 30 to 45 minutes and we, and we talk to the kids in the very beginning to give them a couple basic questions. Now go find a student and ask them the question. And then usually by the third or fourth school, now they figured it out. Now they're asking their own questions. Like, what do they want to know about this university that's going to help them decide whether or not this is going to be a good fit? Uh, but, but wait, there's a skill development activity right in there as well. Mm -hmm. It is the opportunity to get to know people. It is the training ground to do that and not just do it on one of the college campuses that you might be going to with college students, but still in the safety and security of this college sure it is that's it right. is a practice and socialization in college i mean hell that's that's actually part of the model of many of the first year experience programs mm -hmm. uh, yeah good business bro it's, it's, sometimes it's not about 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 what you know it's who you know and and it teaches teaches them that from the beginning you got to be able to network from 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 day one um and i'm gonna share this last story with you okay because this is amazing, amazing about networking and just talking to people. Because because when I put them on these tours, they meet a lot of. I, we was at Norfolk. This is a different story. We was at Norfolk, and um, I introduced them to a, a a gentleman that started out as a recruiter. Now he he he's a he is the connect for scholarships. He's the one that give out the money, and I bring I bring him to the students. I'm like, hey, whenever you meet some people people, you got to make sure you understand how to introduce yourself, how to get their contact information, how to follow, follow up. This is, I'm telling the student, this is the connect. If you need a connect, <laughs> you can't go beyond him. You, you can't even go to the president of the university to get the scholarship. He is the only person that you can get it from. So make sure that when you when you before you leave here, you got his information. You 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 send him an email. You you communicate back and forth. That leads me back to back to my story to Columbia University. Uh, uh, one of one of my frat brothers, he Dan, his name is Daniel. Um, he's from he's from Africa, uh, but he's been living in the United States for over over twenty years. He, he graduated from Columbia. Now he told he told me this story when he was he was a, he was a junior. He was telling me about the story when he was a junior, but also it, it, the story continued until, until he graduated. So he got, he got invited to an event that was meant for upperclassmen only. I mean, I mean graduates, graduate students only. Mm -hmm. so one, one of his frat brothers, you know, snuck him into this little uh, cocktail happy hour type type event that was going on on, on campus with a bunch mm -hmm. of billionaires and millionaires. Um, because Columbia, they that's yeah, said, no, they like, got they got back. Them extra resources, <laughs> uh, so they're they're co mingling, and he's just at the bar, and and this young lady came up to him, and they just started talking. Um, he didn't know who she was. He he was just sharing his information about his experience experience at Columbia. Um, at the end of the day, he got her he got her business card. Come to find out, she works for Goldman Sachs. Later that night, he emails her. A month later, he emails her again. And they just started this communication back and forth about how he's doing in school. At the end of his junior year, she emails him. He's like, what are you doing this summer? She, he says, nothing. I'm going back, I'm going back to Florida. <laughs> She's like, would you, want to, would you want an internship? Would you want to work for Goldman Sachs? Outside of his major. Not even, this wasn't even nowhere near him, what he majored in. So he ended up getting an internship with her. He did really well with the internship, stayed in contact with her. By the time he graduated from from which come from Columbia, which was a year later, they offered him a job 
making $145,000 a year. He took the job. You don't yeah. come out of college making $145,000 yeah, a year. You just don't. You just don't. But that's because that's he, somebody put him on game. Yeah. And that's what is that, that is what that's why you know that's part of why I try to get the kids when we're on the campus to talk to people, get their get their email address, get their business card, follow up. You never know what resources you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna need or have in the future. Good business, man. But I think honestly, that's a great place to leave on today. I was like, you just dropped now. It's like it's like you timed it just to get out of there. right there. Yeah. <laughs> Brother, thank you so much for being here, man. I am so oh, grateful. And it is, and I'm looking forward to the next time and keep us updated on the uh the uh the tours and all the rest of the stuff that you're doing. Actually, you know what? We're gonna take some bonus time and I'm gonna add to this video uh some of the clips of your kids so everybody can check them out. Definitely, please. please all right, man. Oh, appreciate you, man. All right, man. Take it light. Now talk to you soon. All right. All right, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages. I told y'all I know some dope people, didn't I? Y'all don't even understand the level of dopeness. Like, yo, like heron, crack, all that. It's like crystal meth. I don't really do those drugs, so I don't. I can't tell you how they rank in drugginess, but I know dope people. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it has been a pleasure, and I am so looking forward to seeing you, and we will be black tomorrow.